We're back and we're building another gaming PC. In this video, I'll be walking and talking you through the best parts to pick, showing you how to put the system together, and looking at detailed performance benchmarks later on. Testing everything from Apex Legends and Fortnite to COD Warzone and COD Vanguard. Let's do this. <laughs> Master GM27 FQS comes equipped with a 27 inch quad HD panel, 165Hz refresh rate and a customizable ARGB stand. With a super fast IPS panel you aren't sacrificing image quality for response time, while support for FreeSync Premium and NVIDIA G-Sync make it a great all rounder. Learn more about this awesome panel at the first link in the description below. And a big thanks to Cooler Master for making this video possible. Let's kick things off as always by taking a look at the motherboard of choice for this build, the Asus ROG Maximus Z690 Hero. Now the Z690 platform is, that feels like it's shaken about quite a lot in there. The Z690 platform is basically the best platform you can build with right now. That might change if AMD bring out their rumored RTX 7, no, RTX Ryzen 7000 series. We'll get there in the end. There's too many new releases rumored to be coming soon. I just can't quite keep up at this point. The Z690 platform Platform, though it's a great shout you've got of course support for the latest Intel 12th gen CPUs DDR5 memory which I'd only really recommend for high-end configs and of course loads and loads of PCI lanes with PCI generation 5 and generation 4 the whole board looks absolutely gorgeous and is going to do a great job in our build today I'll be coupling it up with our CPU of choice Intel's core i7 12700k the 12700k is great because you've basically got the best part of 12 cores and 20 threads. With Intel's latest performance and efficiency cores both included on this processor, it's got loads and loads of power for everything from gaming to video editing and rendering, enthusiast use cases. Essentially, anything you want from this CPU, it's going to deliver. And if it doesn't quite deliver what you want, why not take a look at the i9 12900K or 12900KS. Both awesome choices for even more cores and even more performance. I'm going to move our GPU to one side for now and instead focus on the memory for the next part of the build. Now, when these boards first launched, DDR5 was and remains, to be honest with you, in its infancy. The new memory tech gives you basically double the bandwidth of DDR4, the memory modules can be of much higher capacities, and you can go ahead and install terabytes of memory nowadays. That's how crazy things have got. But it was very expensive when it first launched and the performance is not quite optimized yet. With that being said, I still think DDR5 is the best shout on higher end builds like this one, especially when you're utilizing in an i7 or a 3080. Thankfully, Corsair have brought some new DDR5 to the market. This is their Vengeance RGB kit. It basically takes their budget-oriented Vengeance kit, something that's been the more affordable kind of memory for a long time now, and adds a little bit of RGB, adds a little bit of pizzazz, but doesn't quite go ahead and cost you as much as something like their Dominator Platinum kits. Memory dims where you'll quite literally need a second mortgage to pop them in your build. They're great sticks around, but you can save some money by going for something like this. We've still got 32 gigs here for plenty of capacity for all of the latest AAA titles. To complete all of our work on the motherboard, I'm also going to pop in our storage driver choice. This right here is Samsung's SSD 980 Pro. You can boost your gaming storage with a fast drive like this. It's one of the best Gen 4 NVMEs on the market. The only one really that comes close is Seagate's Fire Cuda 530. They're both drives that are going to give you in the region of seven gigabytes per second on your read speeds. The Samsung one gives you slightly less on the right, but is a cheaper drive overall. I'll pop latest links to all the components for up-to-date pricing and availability in the description below. If you're not already aware, storage nowadays can actually be a bottleneck. Basically, if your M.2 SSD isn't fast enough for a very high-end graphics card, it can actually cause you to lose performance when it comes to frame rates. Obviously as well, for a build like this, you wanna have something that boots up nice and quick and is nice and speedy overall. I mean, if you're spending a couple of grand on a system, it at least needs to boot up quickly. But a fast drive does also have some real life performance gains, which are definitely worth bearing in mind. Once the SSD is installed, the work with our motherboard is now nicely complete. I do just want to take a couple of moments though, to really admire the beauty of this Maximus board. I'm a computer nerd through and through, right? And it just, it's just stunning. Look at how dense the PCB is on the back. And look at all of the heat sinks, all of the shrouds. It's just... 
It's so pretty. It's just a gorgeous motherboard. It looks so good. That's all. And then once the motherboard is all done and you stop falling over just how good it looks, you can move on to the case, fall over just how good that looks instead. No, I'm joking. This is the Corsair IQ 5000D Airflow. Now this case here is an awesome choice for those looking to build a slightly larger system, something with a bit more stature, shall we say, while still maintaining all of the ventilation. The one thing I don't like about this case is the lack of included RGB fans. Something we'll be correcting anyway with an aftermarket Corsair kit that will work just as well, but it would be nice if you could buy this chassis with loads of their beautiful LL Edition fans, for example. Other than that though, it's great. All the panels are tallest, they just pop off nice and easily. Same goes for our top panel up here. We can repeat this process for the rear panel too, where you just remove your captive thumb screws and pull the panel out like so. Nice! So what I've gone ahead and done is completely strip the case down. Dust filters off the top, dust filters off the front. It took me literally less than a minute because the whole thing is so intuitive and easy to use. I'm then going to go ahead and flip the case onto its back onto our table here for the next stage of the build which is installing the motherboard. Our motherboard is full size ATX which means in theory all the standoffs in our build should be in the right place and all we need to do is drop the board in and it should in theory sit on top of those standoffs nice and easy. Now that that's all done we can go ahead and move on to the cooler next up. Now I wanted to go for a 360 mil design in this build not only to make sure we can overclock our 12700k but to keep the damn thing cool in the first place. This is the Asus ROG Ryogen, Ryogen? Someone please correct me in the comments. I mean, I'm sure someone probably will correct me in the comments anyway. But this is a really, really unique cooler from Asus that I've been super impressed with through my use of it over the last, I want to say like six months or so. Not only do you get three matte black stealthy fans, these are actually Noxua designs as well, making them super, super quiet. But you also get an included screen module, which you can configure through software, and this really, really fancy fan and RGB controller that allows us to plug up three or four fans and the corresponding RGB headers. Great to see. If I remember correctly, we simply just have to pop the screen onto the block a little something like that. We might take this off for installing the cooler as it will make our mounting points in each corner a little bit easier to access. Before then, I'm going to go ahead and pop the fans on the radiator, then pop the radiator into the case and we'll deal with the water block afterwards. These Noctua fans look incredible. I'm normally a big fan of RGB, but something a bit more stealthy is a nice change and they run so, so quiet. They're quite possibly the best fans on the market right now. Now. Once the cooler's in, we can then finally move on to the graphics card. Now, James, shouldn't you just wait for the next generation of RTX 4000 GPUs that are rumoured to be landing soon? Or instead, should you hold out for what AMD or Intel might have on offer? The answer to that question is quite complicated. You're able to pick up some really great deals on a 3080 GPU right now, and it could be another six months before we see any sort of similar pricing on the comparable next-gen card. That means if you're looking to get gaming right away, now could be the time time to grab yourself a great deal. If you want the creme de la creme, the best performance on offer, maybe wait in for the new stuff is a good idea. But there's no guarantees as to how good the stuff will actually be. I'm hoping it's going to be pretty good because otherwise we're in for a pretty torrid couple of years in the PC gaming community. But we just don't know. And that makes it really difficult for me or anyone else to tell you to wait or in fact to tell you to not wait. I'm going to sit on the fence and be a bit of a pain. Either way though, the 3080 is a great card. With 10 or 12 gigabytes of video memory, depending on the 3080 you get. They actually did a sneaky little update, add in some more VRAM. You're going to be really, really impressed with the performance. It's a bit of a powerhouse when it comes to 4K gaming. And if you're gaming at 1440p, you can crank every setting up to maximum and have no worry in the world. Your performance is going to be top tier either way. And it's a card that still provides, nearly two years on from its original release, absolutely top tier performance that you're sure to be pretty pleased with. Now, this Asus Tough model is also one of the more affordable 3080 designs that comes in at a great price point and is going to make sure you get loads and loads of value out of this GPU design. You could upgrade to something like a Strix or MSI Supreme and while they're great cards they're likely going to cost you another one two hundred dollars without necessarily gaining you all that much in performance. I'll link latest pricing and availability for this card and other options down below though to help you keep that little bit in the loop. I'm going to go ahead and remove our PCI lanes at the rear of the case, push back our clip and 
slide the GPU into place. There we are. I was expecting more of a satisfying click sound, but it isn't. It's quite wobbly at the moment. So secure it down with a couple of screws. And actually, that's looking really good. I'm liking the stealthy black aesthetic. I think all we need to do now is add a few Corsair RGB fans at the front to give it a little bit more of a wow factor. But I'm liking the stealthy Noctua ones at the top. I think this whole thing is shaping up to look absolutely amazing. Super happy with this. The final thing we're then going to install is the power supply. Now this is an Asus ROG Strix 850 watt unit. My plan wasn't just to make this build ROG this, ROG that and ROG everything in between, but their 850 watt power supplies are actually pretty well priced, pretty refined as well as far as performance go and offer fully modular designs with an 80 plus gold certified efficiency rating. The whole thing just looks pretty awesome too, although it will be hidden away behind our power supply shield today with pretty nice black cables that I think we can stick with to save a bit of cash. Pop the power supply in, plug up your motherboard, CPU and GPU power connectors, and then we're ready to boot the system up for the first time. You can find a full cables and wiring guide over on our website with a little bit more detail on how to finish off the fiddly cable steps for this build. And with that, we're ready to check out the performance, but first, how good this system looks when it's all powered up in the only way we know how. It's time for a typical Geeko Hot montage. how good this PC looks, you guys know what's coming next. Just how well does it perform? Well, I've tested a wide variety of titles on this 3080 powered system, and the results from our tests will, of course, be on your screen now. This summary graph is designed as a bit of a glossary for PC performance, at least exclusively for this build. But don't worry, I'll be diving into some titles in a bit more detail, starting off with Battlefield 2042. At 4K high settings in this title, we tested with DLSS enabled and set to performance mode. We pulled in a grand total of 93 frames per second on average with strong 90 and 99th percentile results that never dropped below 70, let alone that all important 60 FPS marker. The game looked absolutely awesome and to run a new AAA title with such grandeur was great to see. It was a similarly positive story in COD Vanguard, which is the next game on our list today. We tested this at 4K high settings with DLSS enabled and once again set to performance mode. Here we excelled 160 FPS with 166 frames per second to be precise in the very latest COD title. Forza Horizon 5 was a similarly great story. 4K ultra settings in the latest Microsoft racing title delivered more than 90 frames per second on average given us a great suite of results. Apex Legends, one of our esports games today, tested at 4K high settings, is the next to deliver great frame rates. 119 frames per second to be precise. We got 109 and 107 for our 90 and 99th percentile results in a game that looked absolutely awesome. Apex is quite hard to run, so to achieve these kind of frame rates at 4K was awesome to see. And the good results poured on into with Fortnite, where we tested this time at 1080p competitive settings. Settings. We managed to bring in 235 FPS on average at competitive settings, whereby you tune everything to low except the render distance, which you set to far, and DLSS, which you enable, to bring in some marvellous frame rates. Finally, to wrap up our suite of tests, we also tested out COD Warzone, the other Call of Duty title, arguably more popular than Vanguard, despite being slightly older. And at 4K high settings here, we delivered more than 110 FPS, 114 on average to be precise. If if you're looking for a 4K powerhouse, this could just be the build for you. And if you enjoyed this one and want to see more from us, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.